Hi guys, this is The Constant Show where we talk about movies and I am Constant, a skeleton who has been perpetually revived since the 1940s when I was an Amish farmer. And this week we will be discussing Spiral, which is the latest installment of the Saw series. Let me tell you, I see Saw. It had its ups, it had its downs, but I watched all of them. Spiral is a decent movie. It's pretty good. It sets itself in the Saw universe, but it's disconnected from the previous films. It's so far disconnected, instead of being suspense, it's kind of more of just your standard serial killer detective story. It's a decent movie, but is it a good Saw movie? And to answer that, we first have to ask the question of, what is a Saw movie? Well, there are a couple basic components that every Saw movie has. The first one is flashy cinematography. Sometimes because a guy has a Venus flytrap on his face and they want to show you the accelerated sense of time in that crisis. And other times because a guy walked through a doorway and you realize that you could do it cooler in editing. And I respect that kind of creativity. Two, or whatever number this ends up being, most obviously and infamously, the death traps complete with cassette tapes that give us brief backgrounds on the characters and why the jigsaw killer feels that they're fit to be put into a saw trap. It's really effective storytelling because it combines background and plot with the mistakes of the circumstances. So whenever they get put into a, a trap, it's the immediate sense of crisis, but also the information that we would need to know this character on some level. Three, they have a deep narrative twist that recontextualizes the events of the film in a new light. You can kind of think of it as the missing piece in the jigsaw puzzle that rearranges the whole image. Usually summation together with arc words. Four, and somewhat most importantly, it's very rarely the protagonist gets caught in the death trap until the very end of their film. The death traps primarily affect secondary characters. Most of the movie is this personal hell for them where their worst flaw is pit against them time and time again. Spoilers for Saw 1 through like 7-ish? So in Saw 1, Dr. Lawrence Gordon's flaw is that he doesn't pay enough attention to his patients. John Kramer Jigsaw is on the floor. In Saw 2, Detective Matthews' critical character flaw is that he's impatient. And had he sat down and had the conversation with Jigsaw, he would have realized that his son was already safe and that the videos played were actually of events that happened previous days. However, Detective Matthews' impatience and his willingness to just act on impulse, preconceived notions of situations, is the same thing that allows the trap in the end to work. In Saw 3, it is a man's quest for vengeance, and every Saw victim that he encounters is somebody who played a role in the tragedy that happened to him. Had he forgiven them and worked through that, Maybe he would have been patient enough at the end to not immediately shoot Amanda before realizing that his wife's fate was actually in her hands. Saw so 4, the lesson that keeps getting reinforced is you need to not be a hero at the sake of your own life. Every trap that he's presented is one in which he can sort of step out. He cannot be the hero. And it seems like this lesson is taking hold towards the end when there's the abused couple and their porcupine together and he can help the woman, but he tells her to help him herself. And at the very end, when it gets to the twist, had he just stood back and not done anything, it actually would have been okay, but he didn't learn his lesson. His character flaw came back, and then it resulted in Matthews getting rest in peace, Detective Matthews. Most of the movies function this way, where the story itself is an almost tragedy, where you have a character with a very obvious flaw that we get told and reinforced through every trap. In Spiral, they have some of the flashy cinematography. They definitely do the thing where someone's in a trap and then it just fast forwards through their interactions. It has that part, uh, but I would say that's the easiest part. And just because you have the aesthetic of something doesn't mean you necessarily capture the essence of it. So at, at point number two, or whatever point it ended up being, when it comes to the traps and the cassette tapes, there's a stark difference in the way that the material is acquired, and that detail changes the narrative as a whole. So in the originals, we can conclude that Jigsaw relied on both Adam in the first movie, whose career was stated to be a private investigator, as well as Odie or Obi, whichever, and Saw 2, who was also a private investigator who worked for Jigsaw. This explains how Jigsaw was able to acquire the surveillance photos, but then also how he knew deep personal details about these people's lives. 
In the new one, most of the information that's acquired is public knowledge. It's stated pretty early on that the killer could be anybody on the police force. In this one, the tapes also aren't that great. For instance, one of them only makes sense if we're talking like a 1940s version of the Riddler. It's something along the lines of, don't throw away the key, and then the key is in a trash can. When it comes to the traps themselves, they're probably the weakest in the series. One of them is like a Chinese finger trap thing, and I saw people online trying to hype it up, but it's really sad. The first trap you see in the movie is a guy who has his tongue, and if he doesn't remove his tongue, there's a train coming, and the train is going to kill him. I, I know that convoluted traps is a, a high point of the series, and it occurs a lot. But at the same time, this train just seems unrelated to everything that's going on with the tape. In the previous ones, it was at least on point. It would be like, you know, you've used your eyes for bad, now you've got to remove your eye. In this one, I, I don't know if his crimes involve trains. Did he uh, bear a false witness on a train robbery of some kind? In every previous Saw movie, there's one Saw trap that I, I just can't. I can't do. Uh, like in the second one, there's the needle pit, which is one of the worst things I've ever seen. I, like, I would rather get my head smashed than you throw me in a pit of needles. At that point, I'm just done. You, I, just please kill me. The tracheotomy scene, the reverse bear trap, the, the Venus fly trap. In Saw 3D, they had the vocal cord trap. This one doesn't have any trap like that. I, and the one that seems like it's going to be the most intense or whatever, they don't allow the suspense to build properly. They're just like, this is what's going to happen. And then it starts happening. And then they just cut away immediately. Not that I need to see like the whole thing, but you need to extend the earlier part where you're building suspense. Otherwise, it's like, it's not even on the screen long enough for me to dread the situation. Which in the previous ones was a lot of it was like, just how long do I have to watch this guy crawling through a pit of butter wire and acid? Out of all of the films in the series, this one also has the weakest twist. Almost every previous film, I've touched on a couple of them, but the, the twist actually changes the entire dynamic of everything that we've seen. Watching through it is a different experience. And this one though, the twist is kind of like that puzzle piece sort of fit there, but it didn't really, and then you just kind of forced it in anyways. And it's obvious that you did it, and now the entire puzzle's ruined it, and that was 50,000 pieces that we invested a lot of time in. The, the most important component, right? The, the greater trap. This part kind of happens in the movie, but the problem is that Chris Rock is already in a personal hell of sorts, and his personal hell is justified. So he's like the only honest cop on a corrupt police force, and his character flaw is that he doesn't trust people, but his distrust of people is entirely warranted by the circumstances. In all of the previous ones, the flaw was something that it makes it like a black and gray instead of a black and white. So it feels like a really standard story. I struggled with like whether it was a worse Saw film than Jigsaw because Jigsaw's thing kind of contradicted the lore in a lot of critical ways. But on the flip side, Jigsaw actually made an effort to connect with the earlier pieces of the puzzle, even if it was a sloppy and misguided attempt overall. In this one, though, it's a solid story that's told decently well, but it, it went to such lengths to disconnect it from everything previous that happened that it hardly feels fair to even call it a soft film, when, again, you could just, like, switch it out with 7-2, and people wouldn't even really recognize the difference. Especially because, like, it being saw isn't, like, super relevant to, like, anything that happens. I think that Spiral is a decent overall movie, and it's well acted, and it's got a decent story. It has all the right components to be a Saw movie, but it's really missing the heart behind that engine. And the earlier ones, the, the fewer elements and the way that they were interconnected created a storytelling intimacy in a sort, where details just kind of work together. So every time there was an earlier resolution of a twist, it gave us more insight into why certain things were happening. For instance, Detective Hoffman being in on everything, and then it's like, in the previous films, well, how is Kramer moving these bodies? He was the muscle. And in the later Saw films, we see more surgical traps, which would be around the same time in the story that Dr. Lawrence Gordon was actually working for Saw. Jigsaw. And things like this where the story elements just blend together. 
Another really good example of this, if you look through the entire catalog of Saw victims, you'll notice that a lot of them had a personal connection with John Kramer. A lot of the people that he saw fault in were the people who were connected to him. From his first Saw victim to pretty much his last one, they all had a personal relationship with John, or that one of the other Saw killers knew of. This personal connection between the Jigsaw killer and many of his victims adds another dynamic to the story itself. It makes it seem even less justified than it would already be because instead of being some um, twisted cultist enlightenment kind of thing, uh, it instead seems like a quest for personal vengeance against people that he feels have wronged him. Even in the earlier ones, they were critical of that character, but I think there were still elements that could be explored within the already built universe. I don't think you have to just completely remove yourself from the series in order to reinvigorate the series. I know a lot of people are super excited about this movie because we haven't had a Saw movie since Jigsaw, and we all have kind of like bias takes on that. Details matter, and the, the way that these components interconnect is important to the story being told and some of the takeaways from it. But that's just my thoughts on the movie in a like long rambly kind of way. I would be curious to know your thoughts on the movie. Leave them in the comment section down below. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Have a great day. Which is kind of crazy because when I was thinking about it, I realized what bothered me the most about this movie is in Saw 3D they give us the idea of this cult of Jigsaw that's forming with the Dr. Lawrence being in on the whole Saw thing. And now he's got the guys that were in the, 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 the seesaw trap. Is that it? Or the buzzsaw trap? I think it's the saw seesaw. And the saw seesaw, the guys from the saw seesaw are, are in it with Dr. Lawrence Gordon. And then you think that like, oh wow, there's going to be like a, a whole new cult of people that are all running around doing saw traps together and they're recruiting people just like Kramer recruited Amanda. But this one is just like, no, it's just a thing that happened and now everybody's just kind of over it. It's not a really big deal that that whole police station got wiped out.